Hey guys, welcome to Moose's Machinery. Today's video is going to be on the pros and cons of a VFD. Um, excuse the clickbait, I just know I'll get more watches that way. But a uh, VFD in this context is a variable frequency drive. I don't know if that acronym applies in other areas. Um, a variable frequency drive allows you to vary the frequency. So um, standard line frequency at in the United States is 60 Hertz or 60 cycles per second. Now, um, I'm just going to use this a little bit later in the video. We'll, we'll explain some stuff on here first, just so we have a basic knowledge of what a VFD is. Now, a VFD, as I understand it, effectively changes your standard um, sine wave power. So we can have single phase, so we only have a single sine wave, or we have... Um, Three phase. Excuse me, while I have really bad drawings, guys. Um, and our peaks would be kind of half in the middle. Um, assume that's balanced and even. Uh, but what a VFD does is it steps. So I'm not going to draw the other two phases. But you see how we have um, voltage peaks. That's because it's pulsed DC. So it's um, effectively acting as a really really fast on off switch for power which is why you can use it to convert single phase to three phase. Um, I believe technically if you're running these off 220 single phase, it's really 220 split phases um, because at least in the US, we have um, two uh, 110 or 120 hots depending on where you are. My outlets in this particular shop, um, each leg on my 220 nominal is 118 volts, so I have like a 236, 235 volts um, in those plugs. So you, you do have a, a power allowance here where you'll notice a lot of data plates are 220, 240. Uh, that's a little bit aside. So because we're able to convert our single or split phase input into three phase power, we can get three phase power in shops that typically would not have access to it. Um, now, it would be quite a few thousand dollars for me to run single to um, convert this shop to support a three-phase power. It's still, I would like to do it at some point because we're going to get into the reasons I wouldn't recommend a VFD for certain things. Is just, we'll get to that point. But we'll go over the pros first because I think for my use, the pros do outweighs the cons. Now you get variable speed, um, but variable speed can also be a con because a lot of these motors, they're not inverter duty and they're not variable speed motors. So you really do want to run them at your 60 hertz so they don't overheat. Um, Bridgeport pancake motors are notorious for overheating and what is under my cart? Been looking for that. Um, are notorious for overheating because they don't really have a fan in them. So they're passive cooling. You really do want to run them at their nameplate speeds at their um, line frequency. There are inverter duty motors out there which can survive um, ramping between about 25, 30 hertz and 60 hertz. So you can run them at half speed. However, you lose horsepower running at half speed, but you don't lose torque. Um, I think that's really irrelevant. Now, the majority of machines we use um, as hobbyists or small shops run off VFDs. They run fine if you just use the VFD as what's called a motor starter, where I have a remote switch wired to my VFD. So I put power to the VFD um, either by unplugging it or a master power switch to it. And I just use a remote switch on the VFD. Um, they're pretty easy to wire. If there's a lot of interest in it, we can discuss wiring it. I can show some wiring diagrams and how to ground them. Um, grounding's not always intuitively obvious if you're not, if you're new to this. But, so we get our variable speed and we get our three phase power. We also get balanced power. So the voltage difference between each leg of the phase or each of the three phase legs it's very minimal. I think with most decent or even cheap VFDs, you're within one to two percent. Um, you know, on the really good ones, you can get within half a percent. That's extremely well balanced power. So your motor's not going to run excessively hot with it, but because of that um, DC pulsing, you kind of get dirty power in a way. 
So what you'll note with a lot of these inverter duty motors is when run on variable frequency drives, VFDs, you don't have any service factor. So um, both of my motors that I'm running off VFDs in this shop have a service factor of either 1.2 or 1.4, um, which means for short period of times, you can run them at one and a half horse effectively or one and a quarter horse. But you shouldn't do that on a VFD um, just because of the power conversion and the VFDs themselves often will not survive that overdraw and will go into thermal overload. Um, and that actually should go into the, the pros category is you do have overload protection on the motor built into the VFD where if they draw too much power for too long, they shut off. And you also, you get some soft start and soft stop capacity. There, there's the programming aspect of the VFDs, which are really nice. You don't get that in a normal on off drum switch. But I think those are really overstated benefits. Uh, you get a de facto soft start with most of these machines because the motor might get full load immediately, but it's not, um, it does take time for the motor to accelerate, especially on a lathe. Lathes have relatively high starting loads. Um, and we also get what's called bearing flash over, where the best way to explain that, so this is your inner race, and this is your outer race. Um, VFDs, I don't know why they do this more than line power. Someone can explain this to me. But you get arcing between the... Um, inner and outer race. I believe it has something to do with the voltage spiking in them. So you can get accelerated bearing wear. One way to mitigate this is I use a conductive motor grease and it's a, you can use dedicated electric motor greases. That does help. Um, grease selected for your greasable older motors is really important because, um, because of those voltage spikes too, you can actually burn up the installation inside your old motors. It's more of an issue if you're running them at 4, 440 volts. Um, most of us wind up running 220 volt VFDs. So again, these issues are mitigated by running at lower voltage. Uh, there are in industry applications where people can run VFDs at 800 volts. And I know a lot of um, commercial HVAC systems are run around 440 um, you know, so we also call it nominal 220. A lot of these motors that have 220 data plates on them for three phase are actually run, supposed to run off 208 balanced three phase where there's no bastard leg. Um, a bastard leg would ha will have a higher voltage than the other two. And it was a cheaper way to uh, run power in these old factories, but with a 208 volt in, Okay, so I'm just gonna stop. We're getting off into the weeds. We're getting into more industrial electric wiring versus just focusing on VFDs. Now I did, um, this is a damaged bearing. I hope we can see it, but this pitting in here, this is not from VFD wear. This is just a worn out wheel bearing that was humming in my old pickup I saved. Uh, so we get this pitting. Uh, VFDs, Motors running off VFDs tend to live shorter lives than running off um, perfectly balanced wall power. I would assume running off a rotary phase converter, you'd get the same benefits as wall power, but you also get into the wiring complexities of a rotor phase converter. I personally do think that the advantages, again, of VFDs outweigh their disadvantages, but making an informed decision is important. In this, all this talk about power and bearings, we do get back into there's no service factor. So you can't really overload the motors for short periods of time. But again, a conductive bearing grease alleviates these issues and running at 220 also alleviates them further. Uh, one thing too is you can only run one motor at a time off a of VFD. Now I've seen guys who will wire up a VFD in such a way where they, it's, you can run it all, um, run two motors and you just have a cutover switch between them. So for a mill and a lathe, so they only have to buy one VFD. With the cost of them, I don't really understand why you'd want to do that um, because you can get into situations where you cook the VFD or you cook the motor. And that really steps us into our switching and wiring complexity where you need to wire the VFD to wall power and then you need to um, wire the VFD to the motor
But if you want to use a remote switch, like the factory drum switch on your bridge port, you need to run, you need to wire that switch into the VFD. So the VFDs providing power directly to the motor. And I guess this is a good diagram, but we'll have to draw a diagram. So it makes more sense where we have VFD motor switch. So there's, we'll just draw our three legs going into the motor, but we have two wires or yeah, it's a, it's three wires, um, on my VFDs to the switch. So the way it works is we have our power in, goes to the VFD, the VFD converts my um, single phase wall power into th three phase for to run the motors, but the switch is wired to the VFD, not the motor. And what happens if you cut load on a VFD by say severing a wire, it goes into an overload condition uh, this can damage the VFDs over time um, with, there's a diode pack in there, which basically acts as a one-way gate switch, um, or power can only go one way through a diode. And it's why this sort of acts like um, DC power. I, and again, I'm not an engineer. My grasp on the technology of how a VFD works inside the box is relatively limited. I just know how to make them work. So don't under, um, don't interpret what I'm saying in this video as gospel. I'm trying to explain this in a relatively simple fashion to the casual observer. So should you use a VFD? And that's up to you. Uh, I don't think the wiring is really that intimidating after your first one. Um, if you've ever wired an outlet, you can, you can definitely wire one of these. Uh, but, you know, make sure you've got a good ground. Um, I ground to the frame of the motor. Uh, it, on some inverter duty motors, you'll actually have a ground ring on the stator, uh, which is the spinny bit. So that, uh, that allows that power that would normally go through the bearings to go through the stator itself. And that ground ring effectively becomes the consumable for your arcing over. And another thing is even if you're having a little bit of arc striking like this, it's microscopic. So... For a low-use shop or a low-use um, low hobbyist situation, so instead of getting 10,000 hours out of your motor, you might get six. That's still a lot of hours, uh, and I don't really even know what greases to recommend that are conductive. I think it's most electric motor greases these days are polyurea. Depending on the time frame of your motor, you might have a lithium grease. So the older lithium complexes, when they interact with polyureas, they just kind of, the whole thing turns to a liquid goo and leaks out. So you really need to flush the system with polyurea grease, and it's not that expensive. And just know that the first time you do it, come back in a week or two when it's all mixed up, leaked out, and you refill it. Um, and clean all of the grease out of the inside of the motor because depending on how you grease the machines, it'll leak out, get into your windings and burn them up. Uh, or you just take a sample of the grease, mix it with a couple different greases and figure out what a good electric motor grease that, that is compatible with the grease you already have in your motor. Um, lubrication on these machines is pretty important. Now, I'm not aware of many uh, oiled motors that are three phase i know they exist i have a couple of oil light bushing motors in the shop and i those are literally just brass bearings um, pressed into a housing on a shaft they're really simple robust and they run very smooth when they're properly lubricated and vfds provide really smooth power so um i have a noticeable difference between my single and three phase motors in surface finish and I really think it's worth it if you're willing to put the legwork in that last little bit of surface finish matters. But understanding that VFDs are not an end all cure all for every situation. Now, a good example of when I would not use a VFD is if you have one of these older um, horizontal mills where they may have separate electric motors for the power feeds and separate electric motors for a coolant pump where it's not just one motor running everything through a transmission. That's a really good application for a rotary phase converter. 
It's not a good con um, situation for a static phase converter. In today's day and age, I would never consider a static phase converter, but that might be a good situation for what's called a digital phase converter, which works similarly to a VFD, but I don't really know enough about them to do a video on them or feel comfortable doing a video on them. I think that there's something, there's something I've been considering for my shop because I could really get all the advantages of three phase power without paying for it, but they're a consumable item. They do have a limited lifespan like a VFD and they're fairly expensive, but the mechanics behind them, I don't really understand that well. So I hope this was educational and informative and helps you make a better decision on how you want to power your dinosaurs. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed.